official mad love or not. Got a tip from my father-in-law that my hair becomes a problem when I'm recording it. Yeah, that'd be touching it too much and trying to put it up and shit. So I just put that motherfucker up, start the thing so I don't fucking touch it. You know what I mean? Starting the car quick. Like I said, quick, 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 quick. We're going to go uh, Pauline Bontello versus Luna, Luna, Luana, Carolina. Uh, Bontello's black belt Muay Thai. Uh, Carolina, great jiu-jitsu fighter. Carolina is coming in one and one in the UFC. Won her debut uh, with a United decision win over Priscilla Cachoeira. Uh, loss via submission to Ariana Lipsky in one of the most brutal-looking submissions um, in my recent memory in her last fight. Um, she's never been knocked out in her career and only been submitted once, and that was against Lipsky. Uh, Bontello is 8-3, and three, 6 out of 8 of her wins via knockout. She's never been knocked out in her career and only has been submitted once by Cynthia Calvillo, whose uh, grappling is way better than Luna Carolina's, in my opinion. Uh, that was 2018, though, so it's been a while even since her last uh, submission loss. It's 3-2 and two in the UFC. She got wins over Lauren Mueller, uh, Sajuri uh, Kondo, and Pearl Gonzalez, her most recent win. Or no, Lauren Mueller might have been her most recent win. I forgot. I forget which order it was in. Um, either way, I'm going to go pa- Paulina Buontello uh, for that fight. Easy pick for me there. Uh, Marab Devilishvili. De- De- Devish Vili uh, versus Cody Stenman. Uh, Marab, black belt judo, 12 and 4, never been knocked out in his career. Only been submitted once by Ricky Simone. That was 2018 as well. Uh, he's 5 and 2 in the UFC, currently on a five fight winning streak, uh, winning decisions over Terion Ware, Brad Katona, Casey Kenny, um, Gustavo Lopez, and John Dodson. Stenman in college was a Division II wrestler. Uh, blue belt in jiu-jitsu, 19-3-1 and one is his professional record. 5-2-1 and one in the UFC, never been knocked out in his career, only been submitted once by Aljamain Sterling, who was a teammate of Devashili. Um That was September of 2018 when he lost that fight against Aljo. Decision wins over Terion Ware, Alejandro Perez, and Brian Kelleher. Uh, I think, you know, Stamman's already beat a dominant wrestler and uh, Brian Kelleher, who has power in his hands. Rob's very similar fighter, great point fighter. Um, also great takedowns going up against Division Two wrestler. It might be uh, time to see how Marab's uh, striking is evolving. So we might see a lot more striking from Rob. And, you know, minus 250, I think the, the odds makers have it right there. I'm going to go Marab via decision. Sean Strickland versus Christoph Jatko. Uh, Strickland 22-3. and three. Uh, Ten wins by knockout. Never been submitted in his career. Only been knocked out. Once uh, to Elizio Zaleski Dos Santos. Uh, and that was in 2018. He's on a three fight winning streak at the moment with a knockout over Nordin Taleb, a decision over Jack Marshman, and then a knockout over Brandon Allen in his last fight. Um, his three career losses are to Santiago Ponzinibbio, Kamaru Usman, and Aleskio, Aleski. Uh, Ale- <laughs> All right. Elizio. Elizio Zaleski Dos Santos. Fucked up the first name. I know it. So Dos Santos caught him with a spinning wheel kick. So, you know, give him that one. He knocked him out. Okay, cool. His other two losses, Santiago Ponzinibbio, one of the best strikers in the welterweight division, and then Kamaru Usman, the welterweight champion. Nothing to look down on him there for, man. Sean Strickland could be one of the top five welterweights in the world. We just don't know yet. He's got to get some more wins under his belt. Uh, Jotko comes into the fight 22-4. and four. Almost identical record. One more loss for Jatko. 15 wins by decision. He's been finishing three out of four of his losses. Two knockouts, one submission. The knockouts were to Uriah Hall and Brad Tavares. Uh, that one submission was to Magnumus uh, Seedenball in 2014 before he got into the UFC. Uh, his key UFC wins are Alan Amadovetsky, uh, Mark Andre Burial, and Eric Anders. Uh, I think it's it's clear to see here that, uh, you know, Strickland has fought the more serious competition. Uh, he's only lost to top high-level welterweight contenders right now. And uh, he's, he's got a, a better fighting style, man. He's got striking on his side uh, going up against Jatko. And Jatko has been finished in three out of four of his fights, three out of four of his losses, sorry. Uh, so it's easy to see Strickland winning a, a finish here. 
I think this fight coming up is going to be my first underdog pick of the main card. I own Qtubala. I own Qtubala. Let's just call it that. I know I know it's not I own it. I know it's something else. I just don't know how to pronounce it. Whatever. Versus Dustin Jacoby. Uh, Dustin Jacoby has a three-inch height and a three-inch reach advantage over Qtubala. He's 10-8 and eight as a pro kickboxer. 18 pro kickboxing fights with nine knockouts. Nine out of ten of his kickboxing wins via knockout. 14 and 5 pro MMA with nine knockouts in his MMA career. He's only finished three times. Um, he's got submission losses to Chris Camozzi and John Salter, and then a knockout loss to King Mo. Uh, he's currently on a four fight winning streak that includes um, a decision win over Ty Flores in the contender series, uh, TKO over Justin Ledet, UFC debut. And then a decision win over Maxim Gresham in his last fight, and that was in February. Um, Kutubal is 15, 6, and 1. He's on a two fight skid right now, both to Magomed and Kalaev. Uh, the first one, of course, the premature finish. Uh, so they immediately ran it back, and then he actually got knocked out. Uh, 12 out of 15 of his wins via knockout. Four, he's 4 and 5 in the UFC. He's lost every big fight in his career. He's for Clover Share, Jared Kennier, Misha Serkinoff, the two fights against Magomed and Kalaev. He's lost all those fights. Uh, he's beat guys like Jonathan Wilson, uh, Hen- Henrique de Silva, and then his biggest win, I guess, was against Khalil Roundtree uh, Jr. You know, this guy Jacoby has fought the, hu- the who's who uh, in kickboxing. He has an extensive kickboxing career. Altogether, between his kickboxing career and his MMA career, he's got 18 knockouts. Um, and he's got 10 wins in, in kickboxing and 14 in, in MMA. So out of his 24 wins in his kickboxing and MMA career, 18 of them are via knockout. So uh, I think q is not going to want to strike with this guy that has a 3-inch height and 3-inch reach advantage on him. Um and seems like he is a very a much better striker. I know Kutubal has got power on his on his side, but I think it's going to go down the wrong route with uh, Jacoby. And I think Jacoby easily would be able to point his way to a decision if he wants to do that, or if he if he catches them, I could see Kutubal getting knocked out. So plus one forty. If I'm everybody right now, I would get it while the odds are hot, and I would get on that plus one forty for Jacoby. Cubs Swanson, Giga Chikaze, uh, Giga Chikaze. Chikaze, another pro kickboxer, 30, 38 and 6 pro kickboxing, 12 and 2 in MMA. Excuse me, he's on a seven fight win streak, 5 and 0 in the UFC. He's got wins over Brandon Davis, Jamal Emmers, uh, Irvin Rivera, Omar Morales, and then Jeremy S- Jamie Simmons in his last fight. 7 out of 12 of his wins via knockout. Uh, he'll be going against Cub Swanson, giving up a 5 inch height and a 4 inch reach advantage against Chikaze. Not good. I mean, when you give up that much of a size advantage over a guy that's that skilled in kickboxing, it's terrible. When a guy's that good at using his kicks to keep you at distance and pick away at you, it's not good, man. you got to be a really, really good striker, good counter striker, to be able to defeat one of those guys. Cub Swanson, experience is on his side, man. 27 and 11, uh, black belt in jiu-jitsu. So if he gets to the ground, I see it being a hard day for Chikaze. Uh, he's 12 and 1 by knockout, but he's 4 and 7 by submission. Now, he's a black belt in jiu jitsu, but he's 4 and 7. Four wins, seven losses via submission. Uh, he's on a two fight winning streak right now with wins over, uh, with decision win over Crone Gracie and a knockout over Daniel Pineda in his last fight, which nobody pays attention to this, but uh, I would follow up if I, you know, if, if I knew the people to, to ask questions to. Uh, Daniel Pineda took that fight, I think, a couple, maybe five or six months after the PFL ended. And then the PFL, five, six, seven months afterwards, the PFL suspended him because he tested positive for steroids in two of his last fights. He won the championship, I believe, and he got tested positive for steroids. So, I mean, four, five, six, seven months, it's a very, very short amount of time for him to come to, come. Wean yourself correctly off of steroids, and he looked jacked. He looked jacked in that fight against Cub Swanson. Now, I understand maybe they didn't say anything because he lost. So why kick a man while he's down, you know? I mean, if he tested hot, he tested hot. But if if I knew the right people, I would definitely check into it because I, I, I see it as a huge possibility that he could have – he stepped in on short notice for that fight because somebody else fell out. They needed a short notice place when he stepped in. 
um, which you know you step in on short notice like that, you, you get tested. They're not going to have the results before the fight. You know, you get tested. That's, you stepped in on like a week's notice or a little less than a week's notice. So uh, just something to look into. I don't know why I'm rambling about that. Jujak Kazi is going to be my pick there. Uh, which takes us to the main event, Dominic Reyes, Jiri Prochaska. Uh, Prochaska is coming in at minus 130. I think that is uh, uh, accurate, man. I know a lot of people are going to hate me because Dominic Reyes is coming off two title fights, uh, losing to John and losing to Han Blahovich. Uh He's 12-2, and two, seven wins by knockout. Um, he's only got one loss by knockout and, and no losses by submission in his career. Uh, he's got UFC wins over OSP, Volkan Uzdemir, and Chris Weidman, probably his biggest wins. Uh, Pratska is 27-3-1, so it's definitely more experienced. 24 out of his 27 wins via knockout. He is uh, hasn't lost since his knockout loss to King Mo in 2015. He's on an 11-fight winning streak where he won the Risen title against King Mo. He defended that title twice against Fabio Maldonado and C.B. Dalloway, then got the call to the UFC, knocked out Volkan Uzdemir in his UFC debut. It gets no uh, – I don't think I've ever seen a four-fight – a more impressive four-fight jump to re- redeem, your, redeem your knockout or, or revenge, reve- however the fuck, whatever word you want to call it, to knock out King Mo years after he knocked you out for the light heavyweight title, defend it twice, come to the UFC and knock out a light heavyweight contender because uh, you took the fight on short notice, I believe. Um, or maybe he didn't take it. Maybe they just gave him full game because he was the champion and, and whatever. But either way, I mean, big, big, big step up in competition, whether you like to admit it or not. You know, Risen is not on the same level as the UFC. So the top level guys in the UFC – are probably way, 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 way better. I mean, C.B. Dalloway, Fabio Maldonado, those were UFC guys years ago and were released from the UFC, and now they're fighting for titles in other organizations. So, you know, those two fights are really wouldn't hold much much heat to. King Mo is huge because King Mo was in Bellator, which is like the second best um, promotion MMA promotion that there is, and, and he had knocked him out a few years prior to that. So... It's big for him to get that knockout. Of course, two title defenses, whatever. Comes to the UFC, knocks out Volkan Uzdemir, who's got a great chin and crazy knockout power. And he just, he's just he got that flash. He's got that fucking silly kind of jump around. Still got knockout power. Unorthodox strikes. It's crazy to see. I got Prohatska in that fight uh, as well. So only one underdog on the main card. Uh, prelims go Ronda Marcos versus Luna uh, Pinheiro. Uh, Gabriel Benitez versus Jonathan Pierce, Kai Kamaka the third v- versus T.J. Brown, Luma Lukbunmi versus Sam Hughes. Uh, Sam Hughes, a Dutch Fork High School alum, I uh, went to high school there. I did not know her. She was three or four years in front of me, and never heard anything about her being into MMA or anything like that until she got to the UFC. So. Shout out to her, Luke Sanders, taking on Felipe Corrales. And then Andreas Michalis versus KB Buhar. Uh, that's it for this week. I think I have news for May 8th. May 8th was supposed to be the return of TJ Dillashaw taking on Cody Sanhagen. TJ Dillashaw posting just moments before we started recording that he suffered a cut in training on his forehead from a headbutt or something, somewhere on his head from a headbutt. And... Uh, he will be pulled from that fight. That fight, that card will be looking for a main event. That card has uh, Carlos Diego Fajaya versus Gregor Gillespie, uh, Der- Donald Cerrone versus Diego Sanchez, and Felipe Lenz versus Ben Rothwell or something like that, I think. Uh, I'll take a look just to confirm. Uh, but either way, I don't think any, I mean, any of those three fights could be the main event, but I don't think they would be happy with any of those fights being the main event. I think they're going to look for another, also Neil Magny versus Jeff Neal, Neal versus Neal. Um, you know, any of those fights, I think that they could make the main event possibly if if it came down to it and they needed to find a main event that couldn't put anything quicker. Like, let's see what the main event is for the following week. Chandler versus Oliveira. Maybe they try to move Nate Diaz, Leon Edwards up one week. Uh, you know what, I'm pretty sure Nate Diaz would want to stay on a, 
pay per view. Tony Ferguson, Benil Dariush. Maybe they, they, they ah, maybe they move that forward a week um, to headline instead of being the third to last fight on a on a pay per view. You know, there's a couple fights I could see them pulling up. They got plenty to choose from. That's there. Any fight they choose, I think, other than Benil Dariush versus Tony Ferguson. Uh, or Nate Diaz and Edwards is not going to be a great, you know, you're you're, you're going to suffer no matter what. You lost your main event. It's two week, it's a week and a half out. It sucks. Get by. Following weeks of pay per view, make up for it. Then do what you got to do. You know it sucks, but it is what it is. And other news also. While we've started recording, after we started recording, it was announced that Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul. Fucking Paul Brothers is finally final for June 6th at the Hard Rock Stadium. I think that's in Vegas. That sucks, man. And, you know, it sucks worse. It, it's not horrible. It's not horrible that they're fighting. You know, it is what it is. Floyd needs to make money. Obviously, he's seen last week Jake Paul made a lot of money. Um do what you got to do. Floyd, we've always known notorious for uh, having to keep making money and keep making money. I don't want to say he's, he's not well with managing money. I don't know his personal finances or anything like that, but there's always been rumors about Floyd Mayweather not being able to manage his money and, and being irresponsible with his money. So the need to make money is, is, is more relevant for Floyd Mayweather. And this is going to be a big fight. It's going to be huge, man. I mean, you see anything that happens with the Paul brothers is, is huge. You know, Logan Paul with Ben Askren, a grappler, and mixed martial arts, a grappler, and he had how, however many pay-per-view buys. So it's smart by Floyd. What's not smart for him and for the rest of the fucking world is, let's just say for some fucking magical reason, Logan Paul knocks out Floyd Mayweather. We're in trouble. You know, me, you, this guy... You know, ESPN, MMA, UFC, boxing, the world is in trouble if this guy who has not won a single boxing match in his career, who is 0-1-1, a YouTuber, can somehow beat one of the pound-for-pound greatest boxers in the world, it would be such an embarrassment to combat sports. It's not even funny. These kids... Jake Paul, Logan Paul would walk around with their heads so fucking high in the air. It, it's probably one of, you know, a lot of people talked about the Ben Askren thing. Oh, MMA versus boxing, not a real boxer, world champion MMA fighter. They thought that was going to be bad. Imagine this fucking kid comes in with no wins and takes and beats Floyd Mayweather and makes his first loss of his career against a kid that has no wins. Imagine how stupid. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, nothing about an exhibition. So that would be stupid. Because, you see, Floyd's smart. Floyd, for his last couple of fights, the fight against an Asian kid, um, they made it so they're exhibition. So if he loses, it's not counted against his boxing, professional boxing record, which is smart. You know, if he, it would be smart for him to do that against Logan Paul because the kid's got no fucking wins. So if you lose to the kid with no wins and that counts on your record completely, dude, we ain't even talking about you anymore. Floyd Mayweather is not talked about in the greatest of all time boxers one second after he gets beat by Logan Paul. It's going to ruin his legacy. Ruin. I don't think it's going to happen. You know, uh, Logan Paul has got to have at least 50, 60, 70 pounds on Floyd Mayweather. Still, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but you know, puncher's chance, man. It's a body. This is why I hate boxing. This is why I hate it, man. You'll never see a guy like Khabib turn 40 something years old. Now, I know he's retired, so this would be a good time to say, to say it, but you'll never see Khabib 40, 50 something years old, you know, hasn't been boxing, stays in a gym every now and then, but doesn't, doesn't compete. Right. Come back in an MMA fight against fucking PewDiePie or fucking Mr. Beast or something. 20 something years old, never fucking fought in his life. But fucking every single fight Khabib went out there. Khabib went out there. He had a chance to get knocked out. Connor had a chance to get knocked out. 
Gaethje had a chance to get knocked out. Every fight he has is a chance to get knocked out. And if he takes that chance against a kid with no credentials, it's <laughs> like it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I got to tell you, the best way I could describe it. I feel stupid going on ranting about this fucking Logan Paul kid and Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather made his bed. He's got to lay in it. Whatever happens, happens. I don't care. I probably won't watch it just like I didn't watch the fucking Jake Paul, Ben Askren bullshit because it's stupid, man. I, you know, and then another thing, thing Jake Paul gets on, uh, gets on Twitter, all these places. He calls out Daniel Cormier. He's calling out Kamaru Usman. It's like, dude, call out a boxer. If you don't want to call out a boxer, you want to call out a mixed martial artist, fight MMA. If you don't want to fight MMA, you want to call out a mixed martial artist, call out a striker. Call out Conor McGregor. Call out Justin Gaethje. Call out Justin Poirier, man. Justin Poirier. You know? Call out fucking Yellow Romero or some shit like that. Do not call out grapplers. DC, grappler. Kamar Usman, grappler. Ben Askren, grappler. Dylan Dennis, grappler. Stop. You're a boxer, right? Fight a boxer. Whether he's a mixed martial arts f- boxer and he doesn't train boxing strictly. You want to fight Dustin Poirier. You want to fight fucking... Cody Garbrandt because you want to have size on him. You want to fight somebody that's a good striker in MMA, I'll take it. I'll take it. You want to be a pussy and, and, you know, not fight a boxer, but, you know, at least fight somebody who, who has a chance, man. We we went into this knowing Ben Askren wasn't going to win. We're going to go into the Usman fight with very little hope that Usman's going to beat you in a boxing fight. Dave Cormier, I think, will fucking smoke you, but it's still stupid because he's a fucking wrestler, man. He's not a boxer. He was never a great boxer. He's a good clinch fighter, but you can't clinch and strike with elbows and strike with knees and 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 threat to take down in a boxing fight. So it's not it's fucking useless, man. I'm done ranting about the Paul brothers. Fuck the both of you because you fucking dudes are pussies. Fight a boxer. Both of you fight boxers. Logan Paul, proud of you for fighting Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather, you're an idiot. But uh, until next time, guys. We'll, we'll talk about the UFC fights. Hopefully no Logan Paul, Jake Paul news fucking next week. Uh, see you then. Stay barbecued. Out.